A while back, I made a game and tutorial series about this pizza world called Pizza Legends. It was an RPG game about pizza chefs. I found myself wanting to revisit those ideas and take another stab at the game, really rethinking it from the ground up. So I spent seven days doing that, rebuilding everything about this game with new art, new engine, new mechanics, new everything. Today we're going to talk through my whole process of making a game beginning to end, seeing how far we can get in seven days. And by the end, we're going to be able to export it and share it with friends. This game, Pizza Legends, is heavily based on classic Pokemon. I chose that direction because it's a relatable reference for learning how to make games, and of course, as a 90s kid, those games are huge inspiration to me. Fair warning, I'll be referencing Pokemon a lot as we go because there's a ton to learn from those classic games. Before we start, make sure you subscribe for more videos about making games. Let's get into it. Here's the game we're going to be building. In Pizza Legends, instead of catching Pokemon, the characters bake pizzas that go head to head in these silly, saucy battles. You can level up your pizza recipe to make it stronger and learn new moves. The world is full of snarky rival pizza chefs that are stoked about making the best pizza they can, and just like some notable Pokemon NPCs, they talk trash to get under your skin before every battle. And of course, if you train hard enough, you'll find yourself across the counter from the Elite Four. So we have seven days to build out this idea. Let's get going. So day one, starting with a blank page. My process always begins with sketching. I fill pages of physical notebooks with goofy doodles and cartoons of what the characters could look like. I also mock up screenshots to lay things out like HUD elements and general size of viewport stuff. I'll take photos of the sketches with my phone and drop them into Figma. Figma allows me to drag images around and create a general connected plan for what the world should look like. This also becomes a checklist of all the art assets I'll need to make. I don't want to go too crazy with too many maps because I only have seven days and we haven't even started coding yet. But if I wanted to keep expanding the world, I could plan it out right in here. For starters, I committed to doing two outdoor maps, three-ish indoor maps, and I usually end up adding more in the pixel art process just as new ideas come up. By the end of day one, I have a visual map of everything that needs to happen, and now I can just crank on execution. Day two is about generating as many game assets as possible. From here, I'll move over to my pixel art editor and start riffing on characters from the sketches. I reference Pokemon sprites a lot to create these little people and buildings, but it was really important to me to also incorporate my own style into them. For example, I didn't stay restricted to a proper Game Boy Color limitation or anything like that. The colors seen here are not actually possible on a Game Boy Color, but that wasn't really the point of the exercise. I'm just trying to make something fun and really plaster pizzas all over the place. For the people, I try to create a good mixture of normal civilians and intense pizza chefs. The greatest feeling to me in the original Pokemon games was the immersion when walking around the different cities. Every city had its own personality and feel, and I wanted to capture something similar to that in this game. I laid out a bunch of buildings, grass, water, and mountains in this city layout. Sometimes just making a tile set is the right call here and laying out cities in the game engine, which we'll see in a second, but I opted to just have fun in the pixel art editor and design the city right here. The Pokemon games marked wild battle areas with tall grass. Wild pizzas popping out of tall grass doesn't really make sense in this world, so I opted for these lines of red tape that signify where the battles happen. If you talk to an angry looking chef in one of these zones, you know a very fiery pizza battle is about to go down. Anyway, these assets don't have to be perfect right now, just something close enough to drop into the game engine. Refinement and animations can always be tweaked later. Day three, it's coding time. For this project, I fired up the Godot engine. Version 4 is out now, and it's really fun to use. To bring this art to life, I'll start with a new scene, drag in a map image and the different layers that go with it, and from there, we'll fill this world with game objects. Any little entity or thing you see in a map is likely a game object. They have their own appearances, collision shapes, and interactive data associated with them. People in the map are game objects too, and I customized them so you could swap out which skin's being used, and of course what they say when you talk to them. There's a lightweight progress system in the background that could change what they say too, and that's achieved with a list of story flags. And of course they had to have idle behaviors, just like the original Pokemon games. Now I've created this kind of game many times before in JavaScript, so this day was mostly just about porting those concepts over to GDScript, which is the language that Godot uses. It's pretty easy to use and you can work really quickly with it. Days four and five were all about menus. Game UI is sometimes hilariously tedious to work on and often takes longer than you'd expect, at least for me. In the world of web development, working with frameworks like React or Svelte make this way easier than most game engines. Godot does have some pretty great tools though, like here's an expandable nine slice and options list that I created. It made it easy to just size up a new menu for whatever was needed. Each option has associated data or a callback that should happen whenever you choose the option. And that little system stays flexible enough to cover most use cases like pausing, crafting, or battles. Anyway, tons of menus. That took up all of day four and all of day five. Next up was battles. 
Day six, by the way. I don't know about you, but when playing the first gen of Pokemon games, I always had the Prima guide around or the manual that came with the game that explained the different strengths and weaknesses of different elemental Pokemon types as they faced each other. You know, water is super effective against fire, that kind of thing. I had to come up with a similar trade-off system in the pizza world here, and let me know in the comments whether you think I'm totally right or terribly wrong on the strengths and weaknesses here, but here's what I got. There are four types of pizza, spicy, veggie, fungi, and chill. Chill pizzas are like your ranch dressing, pineapple, that kind of thing. Dude, that's gross. Spicy pizzas are super effective against veggie, but weak against chill. Conversely, veggie pizzas burn in the spice, but easily conquer fungi. Fungi pizzas weak to veggie, but easily overpowers chill. Chill pizzas, the oddballs, overcome spice, but fail to fungi. The different pizza prototypes of all the possible pizzas are stored in a large key value store, like here's Bacon Brigade. The player then has a checklist of all the different types of pizzas they've collected. Layout-wise, I have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio here, so there are some more room for things than the original Pokemon games. I deviated from that classic layout a tiny bit, but still tried to keep it pretty close. From here, it's just a matter of adding a bunch of moves and making sure that the type checking logic multiplies damage correctly. Already, it was day 7, and day 7 was all about QA testing, little bug fixes, and packaging this game up. I'm pretty big on games that you can play in the browser, and so I'll use web export here to package up the game so you can play it just right in the browser. No need to download it or sign the app or anything like that. From here, I can plop it on a site like Netlify or Vercel and send it out to friends for feedback. Now, I'm not currently planning on releasing this as a full game, but if I was, from here, I'd gather more feedback, keep iterating on these systems, and then go hard on content. So more cities, more art, more storylines, more battle moves. By the way, I've documented exactly how I built all of this on my course website. There's a tutorial series on there where we build this game from scratch. Every line of code is covered. There's a link below with more details if you're interested. There's also a Discord community linked below if you want to hang out with other people making games. The camaraderie really helps you actually finish your game. So, seven days well spent. This project was a blast to work on. That's all I have this time. Thank you for watching and coming on this pizza journey with me. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next video.